Years of spatial exploration have left the outer atmosphere cluttered with countless pieces of metal and debris, and experts estimate that this could cause a catastrophic event if it goes out of control. Scientists were then tasked with finding a quick solution to lay all the useless spacecraft carcasses instead of having them circling the Earth for eternity, and the answer was found on the planet itself. A so-called space station graveyard lies far into the southern Pacific Ocean, a unique place as desolate, remote, and mysterious as space itself. The farthest spot from any land on the planet, so isolated from the ecosystem that there's barely any life form at all. And there, thousands of meters deep into the dark ocean, lay the remains of myriads of spaceships that have served their purpose. What goes up? After completing their life cycle, spacecraft become hazardous to the delicate balance of Earth's orbit. Debris left in space has increased to alarming levels, and these parts orbit the planet at speeds that often reach 17,500 kilometers per hour, potentially weaponizing even tiny specks of paint. There are innumerable bits of space junk that pose a threat to spacecraft in orbit, and NASA is significantly concerned. As the agency explained, quote, there's so much junk that we're worried one tiny collision could trigger a big chain reaction. This possibility is called the Kessler effect. Such effect, or syndrome, refers to a potential scenario where the amount of debris in orbit reaches a critical mass, a point of no return, where one collision creates a cascading succession of crashes that create even more projectiles. After reaching that point, the orbit would be rendered unusable. NASA added that, quote, Anyone launching something into orbit these days has to have a plan to either send it into a graveyard orbit or send it back down to burn up in Earth's atmosphere. Indeed, spaceships are not designed to survive re-entry. Satellites farther from the surface can be blasted into space and into a graveyard orbit by simply using the last bit of fuel they have, preventing any harm whatsoever. On the other hand, satellites roaming lower can be nudged out of orbit. The smaller ones are entirely burnt up upon re-entering the atmosphere and eliminated. However, those that can resist the trajectory are hard to control, sometimes landing in unexpected territories like the Skylab space station in Australia. Evidently, it's preferable to ward off debris and guide it to a touchdown point as far away from inhabited land as possible, or a splashdown location for that matter. The most remote place on Earth. With over a thousand miles of deserted ocean in every direction, the pole of oceanic inaccessibility is the loneliest site on planet Earth, so much so that if someone happened to be there, they'd be closer to astronauts in the International Space Station than any other human on the globe. The closest landmasses to the location are the Pitcairn Islands, Motunui in the Easter Islands, and Mar Island in Antarctica. Hrvoja Lukatela, a Croatian-Canadian engineer, calculated the exact coordinates of the Earth's most remote location, and didn't even visit the place. Using a geospatial computer program to triangulate the farthest place equidistant from three different coastlines, Lucatella pinpointed what was thereafter called Point Nemo. The moniker is a tribute to the famous captain of the Jules Verne novel 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, and also a word coming from the Latin for no one. It is highly possible that no human has ever crossed this position. Furthermore, the desolate place is not only devoid of human life, but also virtually of any species. There's a massive whirlpool of currents within the South Pacific Gyre that blocks nutrient-rich waters from the area, making it impossible for most life forms to flourish, except for bacteria and an implacable type of crab. Although Point Nemo was classified as the least biologically active region amongst the world's oceans, Scientists were astonished to discover a peculiar sound roaming the depths of the Southern Pacific Ocean in the late 1990s. Moreover, it was one of the loudest underwater sounds ever recorded so close to the pole. The enigmatic sound was dubbed the bloop, and was captured by microphones more than 3,000 miles away. The team at the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration could not fathom a creature large enough to produce such deep noises submerged so low under the surface. Other than the famous tentacled beast from H.P. Lovecraft's short story The Call of Cthulhu, no explanation seemed possible. That 1926 story dwelt in the lost city of Rillier, which was astonishingly close to the exact coordinates of Point Nemo and the location where the sounds were recorded. The bizarre coincidence led to enormous speculation on whether mythical creatures actually existed deep into the Pacific. 
However, it was eventually discovered that the sounds came from colossal blocks of ice breaking off from Antarctica. A whole new life. Because of its remoteness from human settlements and shipping routes, it was decided that Point Nemo provided an unrivaled site for a space cemetery where obsolete satellites, rocket parts, and whole space stations are sent to rest. Countless spaceships that endured the extreme conditions of outer space and the rough descent towards Earth are now buried 4,000 meters under the sea. In 2001, the Russian space station Mir was put out of service. To bring it back to Earth, a cargo ship docked with the craft pushed it out of orbit. And even though several parts burned during the fall, about 25 tons survived and plummeted to the bottom of Point Nemo. From then on, outmoded satellites and rocket parts have joined the station. Ironically, the Jules Verne, an automated transfer vehicle that was used to deliver cargo to the International Space Station, also lays there. It is also likely that the International Space Station itself will share this destiny sooner rather than later, as the football field-sized facility has been reported to show cracks and fissures. However, it is not queued for imminent demise yet, and has been authorized to operate until 2024 at the very least. Alice Gorman, a space archaeologist from Flinders University, stated, quote, People involved would acknowledge that at some point it will come to an end, but it has been planned for. The process of deorbiting and re-entering has been closely studied by engineers at the European Space Agency, and the data they've collected has provided a guide to ensure a controlled re-entry of the ISS when its time comes. However, as Gorman explained, the ISS comprises innumerable parts, including modules for housing the astronauts, laboratories, bathrooms, a gymnasium, and a spacious bay window. What's more, it has externally mounted solar arrays and robot arms. The expert explained that, quote, if they do have to separate some of the modules from each other, that's likely to create some debris. As it enters the atmosphere, it will start to break up. One reason Point Nemo is a good place is that the debris footprint, from the first bit to the last bit, can be kilometers and kilometers long. But there are reasons to be cautious. Gorman added that there's a high possibility that something could go wrong, and the water could be polluted with toxic substances. Nevertheless, the space archaeologist clarified that all volatile fuels run out before impact, leaving only mostly safe materials like stainless steel, titanium alloys, and ceramic pieces. She concluded, quote, We send it down to the bottom of the ocean, and like shipwrecks, the world over it becomes a habitat, a coral reef, a whole new life.